Right. So we will begin. We're on page 187 of Social and Communal Harmony. And um, it's this uh, uh, section starting War Breeds Enmity. So um, this we have been um, um, this is a section on on establishing an equitable society. But this particular passage and the one after that is very much about um, karma and how one's action might have what kind of results they might have. It's very uh, uh, kind, kind of one-to-one. Um, -one. If you do this, then that happens. But um, some of the relationships are very interesting. So we'll begin. Right. So King Ajatasattu of Magadha mobilized a four division army and marched in the direction of Kasi against King Pasenadi of Kosala. So for those who are not familiar with um, uh, Indian history at that time, or these characters, King Ajatasattu and King Pasenadi, they were um, the rulers of um, kingdoms in India at that time. And those kingdoms later became, they, 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 they actually, this did happen in history, it's proven. And those were what later led to like the Mauryan Empire and some of these kingdoms, little kingdoms disappeared altogether. But these wars actually did happen. King Ajatasattu of Magadha had the, a, a very large empire, Magadha. And he was kind of known later on for having murdered his father to gain the to gain the throne. So he was he was he's 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 a bad guy in the suttas. And King Pasenadi, of course, also had a very large kingdom, and he was a big supporter of the Buddha. Himself, he never seemed to have attained any great state of enlightenment, but he asked a lot of interesting questions and he often came to see the Buddha for advice. He is a kind of good guy, but not uh, enlightened guy. He's just, a, he's just a nice guy, you could say. So these are the two characters. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so here we go, King Pasenadi. So King Pasenadi, heard this report, mobilized a four division army and launched a counter march in the direction of Kasi against King Ajatasattu. Then King Ajatasattu and King Pasenadi fought a battle in which King Ajatasattu defeated King Pasenadi. King Pasenadi defeated retreated to his own capital of Savati. Then in the morning, a number of monks dressed and taking their bowls and robes entered Savati for arms. When they had walked for arms in Savati and returned from the arms round after the meal, they approached the Blessed One and reported what had happened. The Blessed One said, Monks, King Ajatasattu of Magadha has evil friends. So he's the bad guy. King Pasenadi of Kosala has good friends. One of them was the Buddha. Yet, for this day, King Pasenadi, having been defeated, will sleep badly tonight. So even though you are a good guy and have been visiting the Buddha and listening to his sermons, 
just the fact that he has lost at something, he has lost uh, a war or a football match or whatever it is, um, you, he's not going to sleep well that night. And this is what the Buddha says about winning and losing. He says, victory breeds enmity. The defeated one sleeps badly. The peaceful one sleeps at ease. Having abandoned, the peaceful one sleeps at ease, having abandoned victory and defeat. I'll read that again. Victory breeds enmity. The defeated one sleeps badly. The peaceful one sleeps at ease, having abandoned victory and defeat. So this is very good for all of us. We think that if you win at something, you know, if you win, I don't know, a football match, you <laughs> Or are you playing a game of tennis and you won, someone else lost? There's always going to be a winner and a loser. So this is how the world works, you know, we're always competing against each other. And we think that somehow if we win, we are going to be happy. And that is what our whole, whole um, society is built on, competitiveness and um, success over someone else. But the Buddha says victory breeds enmity because there's always, you may be the winner this time, but the next time you could be the loser. But he says the peaceful not one, not the winner, the peaceful one sleeps at ease, having abandoned victory and defeat. So if you truly want to be happy, it is not by winning at everything you do. It is by abandoning victory and defeat. So the next time you're playing a game of Scrabble, <laughs> you let the uh, find all the nice pieces for the other person to, to win. Help them to win. Um, yeah. Yo, there's already a question here. Chi. I don't know what enmity is. Oh, Chi is asking, what is enmity? Enmity means like you have um you have a, a winner and a loser. Enmity is like someone against you. Is that a good tra translation? Enmity is you have um you have you have an enemy. If you are a winner, you have an enemy. Say uh, you win at the game of Scrabble, the next time your cousin is going to try and win at the game of Scrabble. Scrabble is a bad, ex simple example, but it does happen, you know. There are very competitive Scrabble players. Uh, my grandmother being one of them. Uh, um, but it's, uh, so the moment you are a winner at something, maybe it's your work. You are the one who got the, got the uh, promotion your colleague didn't get the promotion and so now you have an enemy to some degree but it's how our mind relates to that position do we say oh great now I have uh, got this great post I have a bigger salary more than all my colleagues let me help them to come up in their job rather than ha now I'm the boss and I got the job you didn't get the job you know, this kind of attitude of competitiveness and wanting to be the winner over somebody else. So this is what makes us not being able to sleep at night. It is when we give up that tendency in our mind that is just so ingrained to beat somebody else at a game. 
um, when we give up that tendency to be the winner, that's when we stop having enemies and we stop, uh, you know, um, I don't know, tiring ourselves, always having to be number one. <laughs> So I will just stop there for now, and um, because it's it, it uh, oh sure yeah, and, and yeah maybe I'll stop there for now and see if anyone has anything to say or anyone in this room. No, no, I will be because <laughs> solemnly quiet. Uh, yes, Shirley. Okay, I have to please. Can I ask you to unmute? I'm just wondering whether sort of playing Scrabble and there's a there's a very vicious game that my very dear friend taught me to play, and she was a different person playing it because she <laughs> she 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 could really stand up for herself. She really can't look after her own needs. This person. And it was such fun because we were very competitive. Um, and, you know, I get quite vicious when I play Scrabble and I really want to win. But it's, I don't think there's, there's any, there's no hatred or en enmity. I don't dislike the person. And I'm just wondering whether that, that sort of state of really wanting to win at a game mm. when it's play mm. and you still love the person dearly that you're, you're playing with mm. um and i'm just wondering whether that's unskillful or whether it's just a sort of um release of something it's oh. interesting i don't know whether we can I'll, I'll sort of but it is it is it's it, it's it's very interesting because uh it, it's not like it's not like somebody else getting promotion or your favourite team winning, or your favourite political party winning, where there are definitely feelings of aversion. I mean, not maybe not enmity or hatred, but definite aversion towards the other party. Right. Um, but in this this sort of game playing, um, I'm sure your grandma didn't hate the person that she won. You know, it's probably just a... I don't know. But then, you know, with football, it can get really, really aggressive, and that's a game. So, I mean, it's just something to reflect on. I, mean, I don't think there's an answer. It's probably just we have to just look at our own hearts and see what's there. Um, I don't know. Yeah, good point, good point. Does anybody else have anything to say? I used to hate competitive sports at school, actually, for just this reason. Well, I only hated competitive sports because I was useless at sport. <laughs> but because I'm better with words, then I quite enjoy competitive games like Scrabble. <laughs> I don't know. Does what does anyone else have to say? <laughs> oh, okay. T. Oh. Yeah. I think sometimes you can feel the difference when, like, sometimes. Wait. wait can Can you hear Chi? All right. Oh. Yes. Yes. Ish. Maybe a bit louder. Okay. I think sometimes I can feel the difference. Um, sometimes someone is maybe being competitive, but if I lose, they don't put me down too much. Mm -hmm. They kind of say, yeah, I won, but they don't feel like they're really mm -hmm. holding it against you and they're remembering it too much. Whereas sometimes when you do lose, it just feels like the other person now feels much better than you. You can just feel a slight difference mm, uh, mm, in, mm, in, like how important, you know, there's a sense of importance they give to the situation. Right. And I, so I can relate to Shelley uh, saying sometimes it feels someone's competitive, but they're not going to hold it against mm. you too much at the same time. Mm, mm. Sort of that's a that's a reason for them to feel superior for the rest of their life. Yeah. Sean. John, may I ask you to unmute, please? Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm definitely competitive when it comes to things like sports and certain things. Um, 
It's interesting, actually, what Shirley said, because I would say the same. When I want to win, it's not necessarily I don't want others to win or I have any hatred towards them. It's actually more on me. And uh, But the I guess, you know, and I've heard Adjan Brahm saying when he was at school or whatever it was, he was no good at sports because he just wanted the other team to win. And I don't know whether he's just saying that to tell a story but and get the point across. But... Yeah, I do wonder. The thing is, it's kind of addictive because I have been fortunate enough to, uh, you know, win certain things and when I was quite young. And I've always searched for that in my life, that feeling, because it makes you feel so amazing and it's like a drug. And I guess mm. potentially the thing about it is it's a kind of craving then. And there's also the well, you win or you lose, and when you lose or you don't win, let's say, you're not happy or you're not 100% happy. Therefore, the whole point of, I guess, this sutta would be like you've got to let go. And I I, I, I mean, I'd find it very hard, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, not there yet. But I, I guess if you can let go, that you would be more indifferent about, not, I don't know if indifference is the right word, but you wouldn't find unhappiness or have craving, I guess. Right, right. Yeah, yes, that's a good point. It's how to find that enjoyment in playing without necessarily having to win. Yeah. Um, Theodora, yeah. You can unmute. Theodora, yeah. Uh, Theodora, can you please uh, unmute, please? I needed to okay, wait for the message. I just wanted to share because um, I actually um, started to play Scrabble last summer, <laughs> interestingly. <laughs> I mean, apart from when I was young, but, um, and, you know, now you have apps on the phone and it's really good actually because um, it's, uh, well, the way it's done, and um, we actually, you know, now we have our phone as well. Like we can look for words and, you know, like sometimes So I allow myself to be, you know, like kind of a, um, mm-hmm. it's a, a tool. Well, I've noticed that it's really interesting because game is actually game. Yeah, it's really, um, um, I think, yeah, it, it has some research as well that shows that it's really beneficial like it's a, in a way to learn in a way to grow mm. like playfulness is what is needed to certain degree mm. and i find that um thinking of scrabble it, i mean just to take this example <laughs> and the limitation that it gives and how our mind you know confronted to limitation has to come up with you know, resources and so on and so forth. And so this is, you know, mm. like on the cognitive level, you know, really helping um, our steps to develop certain skills. Mm. And, um, but yes, then like as Sean said, there is this kind of addiction things. And mm. I had to remove the app from my phone at some point <laughs> because I find it was like every time I had some time, I I was actually, <laughs> because now you can do with the computer and everything. So, you know, like, mm. um, but I really find helpful because <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just reading the, <laughs> the message. I find it's really helping me to remember words, to even um, being aware of the words that I knew, you know, so it has really value of like how in a playful way it helps us to grow. And mm. depending on intention, like, yeah, we have the parasympathetic, you know, like we can do it with an approach of just mm. learning and, you know, sharing a moment. I did it with my mother and she's really good with it. And so we, <laughs> and I could see her as well taking, gaining confidence in her set mm-hmm. just by realizing like she's really good with words and you know like she she so she she got hooked as well in it and so yeah I think that the mm-hmm. playfulness aspect is really 
mm. important to keep in mind that it is mm. you know nature and I think that it is there is a component into it that is really beneficial um but the, I agree I can share with you as well venerable Bika, um that I struggle with this strong um dichotomy with like winning and losing mm. or, you know this kind of like really strong emotion that we can go to at the end that mm. um, creates a lot of separation mm. and conflict even sometimes so mm. yeah I I would rather like Ajahn Brahm maybe yeah be out of it but I, I find it really challenging because how can we really engage with food in this something, mm. you know, um, not having any attachment to the result? Yeah. I, I think that's from our conditioning. This is mm. how we have been brought up as well, you know, in schools and mm. everything. And it's really hard to reprogram this. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, when Prachanda was reading an article that a lot of what we enjoy is not, win, not for example, buying something online. Not it's not getting the per, it's not getting the vase or whatever it is, pair of shoes or whatever it is people buy online. It wasn't getting the pair of shoes. It's the search for the pair of shoes trying this shop, trying that shop, going onto this side, going onto that side. And that desire to get there, to get to sort of win, that's the that's that's what is called craving. It's the the desire itself that makes us feel alive, that makes us feel where somebody going somewhere. And that is the root of, of our sense of self. That is what makes us go on from life after life. It's the search that we enjoy. It's the kind of, you know, I'm going to get their feeling that that is what um, tanha craving really is. So, and that is also what drives us to win something. Um, it's not so much winning it, it's that drive to win. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, let's, Shirley, you had something to say. Shirley, may I ask you to unmute, please? I just wanted to tell a very quick little story. Um, some of you will have come across Kitty Saro, who is a teacher yeah. and used to be a monk yeah. at uh, Aravati and Ch well, at Chithurst, he was mainly. Mm. And he was actually a very sick man then. But before he ordained, he was a wrestler. All right, yeah. And he told a story, you know, and he was a champion wrestler. And he won and he won and he won. And then one day he lost. And he said, what a relief. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that stuck with me because he had that, uh, yeah. There was yeah. the letting go, the sort yeah. of, that was the end of that sort of yeah. craving. I think it's yeah. a great story. All right. Oh, I guess it's the, 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 the craving ended. I don't know, but it was a sense of relief when he didn't get this sense of relief. Just amazing. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Finally, I can give up running. I can, I can give up craving. Interesting. Um, Liz. Oh, 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 oh okay. Liz. There is Liz now. Yeah. Liz, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yeah, me, I'm going to sound like goody two shoes, but when I was little, I, I suppose I must have been competitive, but I realized very quickly when I was very young that it feels very uncomfortable <laughs> to be or the winner or the loser, whichever, the competition itself was uncomfortable. Mm. Now, obviously, being dyslexic, I never played Scrabble. Uh, <laughs> 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 that would be really, uh, yeah, not, not my game. But um, 
and when you think about it, when you look at people around you, when you observe them, when there is the slightest competition, you feel the tension rising in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and myself, you know, if I feel, oh, I, you know, I'd like to do that, you know, that's it. The tension is there. And, this tension is very uncomfortable. It, it clouds the mind. Mm-hmm. And um, that is not, uh, I've got many faults, but this one uh, is very easy to give up because I don't think I've got it. You know, it, it, When you observe your own mind, uh, you feel the tension the minute there is competition. I don't want her or him to have that. I want to have that. Mm. I want to win. I, that's it. The tension, whether you win or lose, mm. that tension has been there and has polluted your mind. You know, I, I mean, as I say, I'm not an angel, but that is something I'm very, very wary of. And I, uh, mm. I, I don't give in to that at all because mm. it, I don't have the feeling it, but I, I get inside. And it's, a, it's okay. an indicator, that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay, there are a few more comments from the room. I think Chi had something to say. Yeah, more of a question. Um... I think what I notice more in myself, it might sound a bit strange, is competition with myself. Mm. Like, uh, oh, I could do this a few years ago very well. Can I do it as well now? Almost like comparing right, me right. version one with me version three. Yeah. And, you know, if I right, lost this skill, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. no, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just, you know, and it's coming from a desire of wanting to grow, uh, mm. to get better at mm, things which sounds mm. kind of good but, mm. but I just wonder how to really make this healthier and not mm. too much of a um, judging yourself yeah 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 this sort of comparing actually the word um mana in Pali which mana is our sense of self translates as measure so that's to that's what we do all the time. We measure ourselves. I'm better now. I was worse now. Then you know, I was bad. Then I'm good now. Um, but that is is the bottom. I mean, we just do it because that's what our egos do. But at least to be aware. Okay, I don't have to make this so such a identity thing. You know identity now I am better now I am worse but to uh, just recognize oh okay Um, okay so it is not so good as before that's all right you know I'll just mm, work on it without sort of cutting yourself into pieces and saying good bad that sense of that sense of me that is attached to having improved or or not improved. Does that make sense? It makes that, that so, sense. Um, that sense of me is needs to improve. Mm. Is, is yeah. there any like useful exercise uh, for approaching, you know, you kind of notice you're comparing a lot? Yeah. Uh, a useful exercise i think just being aware of the aware of the feeling and how your mind is reacting to a sense uh, reacting just noticing it you become uh, uh, a little wiser to what your mind is doing mm-hmm. yeah yeah a bit of loving kindness and acceptance hey you're not going to go up up and away towards enlightenment so <laughs> Yeah, just a bit of, just a bit of accepting. I think Aya Viveka had something to say. She put her hand up. Yes, this aspect um, in, in the sutta, it sounds as if the one who's defeated has no choice but to lose sleep at night. Mm. And actually, it, it reminds me of the sutta, the dart in the Vedana Samyutta, where the Buddha says, um, 
that the uninstructed worldling mm. shoots him or her, herself with a second arrow. Mm. And I think I, I would really struggle, uh, you know, um, with giving my enemy the satisfaction of not only defeating me, but also sort of making me lose sleep. Um, so I'm yeah. I'm interested in this aspect. How can mm. I come to a state that mm. to separate being defeated from having to lose sleep? Mm. How, how do I get a choice um, mm. and sort of say, yeah, I've been defeated. This is what the first start. Mm. Mm. But I'm not going my, to give my enemy the satisfaction of shooting mm. myself with a second mm. dart and sort Good of come point. to this this yeah. um, state of detachment yeah. around lo- yeah. that, that. Oh yes, that's that's the, this aspect mm. of the peaceful one is beyond right. has gone beyond winning right. and losing, yeah. sort of right. completely yeah. being detached from. Mm-hmm. winning and losing if you mm-hmm. take this in, in in this context maybe we can take it as a sort of additional set of loka tamma instead and of mm-hmm. frame um, blame and praise gain and loss yeah maybe it falls into mm-hmm. this category of gain and loss mm-hmm. it's sort of winning and losing and mm-hmm. um it's part of our um job to to become detached and mm. no longer so attached to the lokadama of, of mm. gain and loss winning and losing yeah, yeah. any comments on that <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, any comments on that specifically but yeah it's interesting oh. um, i i never understood it but now you say it i always mm. have the expression someone is such a sore loser before and People don't enjoy that when someone loses and also kind of is kind of angry about it. So, so, so I think there's a maybe a worldly sense of, you know, if you're going to lose, um, take it well. Don't mm. make it worse for yourself. Mm. Yeah, that, that sounds good too. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. I think uh, I know. just the, while you were saying that... Uh, uh, you know that competition thing. Uh, I think I just realized myself why you were saying. Okay, you know, I just uh, got promoted six months ago, and it's not the feeling that you have promoted, but you can see many has not been up there, and you actually feel proud, and there is light of evil, evil element in it. Mm-hmm. Was, you know yeah. that uh, though you are proud, but you are also proud, but you can see that not many mm-hmm. of them are in that position. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's I'm happy that I realized this oh, right. though we are trying others to reach into that position mm. trying uh, everybody you know to help and uh, grow well in the career mm. but deep inside uh, you are proud of yourself but in slightly in evil way as well mm-hmm. while you are saying it I noticed that is mm. something there mm-hmm. I think as noticing it might mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. making it wiser yeah, I just yeah. keep that in mind that yeah. this is something happening yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just very hard to be yeah. proud and not to be too too proud. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a balance. It's very hard to achieve. Right, right. As but like you said, just that like, oh, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to recognize that is yeah. then at least a little bit you don't you don't quite do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, a lot of practice is just recognizing. Ah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And then you don't buy into it quite as much. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I just mind or do reckless thing as soon as we don't spot it. It's like a thief catching it. Are oh, you doing this? And then you stop doing it. Yeah. yeah just like yeah, yeah, yeah. catching the thief. Really. You don't, you're not doing it consciously. It's just happening subconsciously. It's a matter of catching it. Right. You right. Think? Before the thief totally goes into the house, has wrecked havoc and been caught by the police. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, Sunayana, Sunayana. Sunayana, can I ask you to unmute, please? Uh, hi, hi, Vendrabo. Um, okay. um, well, this is this isn't exactly about um competitiveness, but mm-hmm. um, something about you, uh, what you mentioned earlier about um desire and craving itself. Mm-hmm. 
And um, so for me, um, uh, I have a lot of craving when it comes to food because I also like use it as my um, coping mechanism. Like when I'm like sad or something like that, or I'm, I'm overwhelmed about something. Mm -hmm. And um, I always know like some of the things that I've been like noticing in terms of um, the craving I have for food is um, it, it, when when I get craving for food, right? Mm -hmm. um, although uh, like I have uh, these long term um, things in mind in terms of my goals when it comes to food, how many times I want to eat per day, what I want to eat, all of that just goes out of the window once <laughs> craving comes in, right? So mm -hmm. obviously it's bad, but mm -hmm. when when um, I do have these thoughts of craving, um, it's it's very much like the mind is impaired and it's no longer function because it's just the 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 what uh craving does it sort of like drives you towards the object of desire mm. even though it's not good for you know um one's um welfare in the long term so um and and but the, the problem is that it's it's very seductive. It seems good. It seems nice in at that time. It seems pleasurable, like the thoughts of, uh, like sort of the the thoughts um that that I get like if it's like a delicious kind of food, mm -hmm. and many times when I actually eat the food, it's like underwhelming. It's it's so it's not so tasty. It's like so impermanent. As soon as I finish eating, it's gone, and then I regret it. And so underwhelming, but. Um, all the planning that goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go here. Like, this is what I'm going to order. Like all of the mm. thoughts that go into getting it, I think, um, I think it's, it's um, what you said earlier, Vengeable, like it really did, um, you know, um, uh, touch the mark because mm. um, like it's, I think um, it is, isn't the whole idea um, to realize that this indeed is suffering, even though during that moment it feels pleasurable, like mm -hmm. what what we crave for feels pleasurable, but ultimately that is suffering because it's mm -hmm. disturbing the mind um, in a way where um, it's sort of making you want something, mm -hmm. even though it might not be good for you, it's making you want something. Um it's yeah I, I don't know if I'm making sense yeah 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 no we I think we all know what you're talking about <laughs> there are lots of smiles here um yeah you know I find these kind of um uh, food cravings or or wanting to check your phone cravings I found that in me check your mobile phone the moment it goes beep um that sometimes you have to replace it with something less less uh, destructive you know kind of like uh, you can't fight it you can't say okay I am not going to you know I'm going to tie my hands because it's that fighting against your craving that even makes it even more unbearable you know I'm not going to do it at all odds so you have to be really gentle with yourself and give yourself a, a soother as such um, in the in that is not quite so so destructive in the meanwhile, I find. Um, uh, yeah, fighting your craving doesn't work. Saying, I will not eat this food now, you will not eat this food. It, 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 it just makes it worse. So you have to find um, gentle ways of, of, of uh, talking to your mind, of giving it um, some other more pleasant thing to hold on to. For example, uh, uh, it, you know, um, there are so many wholesome things the Buddha talked about. Thoughts of generosity. Give, imagine giving that food to somebody else, Had the joy of offering that biscuit to uh, a poor person. I'm not sure. I just thought, thought that up just now. But um, wholesome things to replace that, that 
that urge that give that is not quite so bad for you. I don't know if that's helpful at at all, but I, I completely I, I completely know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, like renunciation, as Theodora says. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, um, uh, Sean had his hand up. Sean, uh, may I ask you to unmute, please? <clears throat> please. Hi, yeah, I was just sort of reflecting on all of this and everything everyone's saying, and 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 then it kind of makes me think that, you know, going back to this, the, the, the sutta that we're reading and, you know, talking about being defeated or winning, and, and one thing I think I actually struggle with in my life is my desire to do very well in things. And I put myself under a lot of pressure. And when Shirley was talking about that wrestler, I could understand, not that I'm saying I've, you know, done anything like what he's done, but how when you constantly want to win, uh, you and you're, you're going to be putting yourself under so much pressure that when you finally lose, it's just like a bit of a relief because now it's happened right the worst has right. happened it's over right, right, um, right, right. and what I notice is well so one of the things that I do is I push myself beyond my limits and I kind of like end up making myself ill because I'm not listening to my body properly and I've done it for all my life so it's very difficult for me to tune in in that way and, and I'm very good at like if I go on a retreat I can go right into the retreat and I can drop all of that Mm. And the point I'm also making is that when you're those kind of, you know, wanting to do well and the feeling when you do do well or you win, mm. it's, uh, yeah, the best way I think I mentioned before is, is like saying it's more like a drug because, and it, I suppose there is an element of drug because you, you have these um, endorphins, which mm -hmm. are stronger than like heroin and things. Mm. And the point is, is that, the happiness, for example, that I felt in a retreat with the tranquility, mm. it's a completely different thing. It's it's much more refined, maybe is a good word for it. And so whereas the sort of joy and, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to eat this lovely food. And it tends to be at a time when probably you're tired or a bit stressed mm. or, you know, I want to do really well and win at this thing and I've got to push myself to do this. It's, it's very much up and down rather than that kind of lower, refined, smoother sort of happiness and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I was just sort of reflecting on that. And, and yeah, it's not easy. Um, and we live in a world, like when you talk about phones, I notice yeah. sometimes I just have to go, right, I'm going to put my phone away because I am i can't stop myself. Yeah. <laughs> and then I feel really bad afterwards because I'm like, oh, oh, I'm trying to do a million things and I'm doing all this stuff. You just put it away. And then I even just reading a book or meditating, whatever it is, even watching TV can, depends what it is, can feel better because, yeah, so it's it's less gross, if for want of a better word, more sort of, you know, in your face and those those strong emotions, I guess, because you're getting dopamine hit. So, yeah, that was just my reflection anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah, so we slowly have to uh, uh, wean ourselves off the grosser uh, defilements, for what a better word, and then, you know, go from the mobile phone to the TV, <laughs> to the book, <laughs> to uh, just sitting down, to then meditating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nikos. Uh, Nikos, may I ask you to unmute, please? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, all this uh, conversation is very helpful to me. And um, uh, at this moment in my life, I, I'm struggling a bit about um, not uh, answering emails or mm. I, I, I want to, when I have this, uh, the e especially with emails and especially with work, because I, I get lots of emails there. Mm. Um, and uh, even though I said to myself, uh, okay, uh, you do something else mm. and you don't have to answer immediately, right. it still is 
very difficult to to hold yourself and uh, don't press the button. So and uh, what you said, strong accord, I think, and it, it talked to me um, that uh, this can happen. So you have to ignore it a bit. But my question is, I think, how how could you ignore it? Mm-hmm. Um, because I find myself ignoring it for one day, mm-hmm. and then the rest of four days of uh, of, we- of the working week. I cannot do it anymore. I'm exhausted of trying. Mm. So can you, uh, yeah, is there any, I don't know, tip of know. how to handle this? <laughs> any <laughs> tips from the, any tips from anyone else? Yeah. Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin, may I ask you down mood, please? Hi, yeah, so I've, um, I've noticed that all these kinds of things, if you look in detail, they kind of tend to boil down to a feeling of a contraction in the mind. The mind contracts around a certain thing. Mm. And any time I've tried to get past whatever I'm stuck on like that, whether it be answering things straight away or whatever, all I'm actually doing is adding more tension and contraction into a tense, contracted mind by trying to use force to overcome force. Mm -hmm. And the only way I think you can actually resolve contraction is to relax and release. And I suppose there are many, many different techniques you could use to do that, Um, many of them found in the great meditation traditions of the world. But you have to find something that you can use that works for you. First of all, to be able to find what is the sense of contraction underlying the external Uh, behavior or whatever the external appearance is what's the thing behind that and then having a method that you find works for you to resolve that underlying tension in the mind is that's the only thing I've found that's helpful Mm. right right yeah I think in the Buddhist tradition one of the very useful things for that is metta Mm. yeah Thank you, Benjamin. That's Can very I, nicely put. Uh, okay. Chi, chi, sorry, Gun. Oh, okay. Hold it's a second. Uh, Hold on a second. Gunther was Gunther was next. Gunther. Well, I, I don't have to be next. Uh, oh. uh, for Nichols, I think um, the only tip I can say is the less you force, the better it will go, but it will take time. Um, I once discussed with someone about metta. People said, told me, they want to be kind and nice, but they always get angry with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I did is I just uh, did it with with road kills and so. You know, when I saw it, I thought, while driving, you're not doing much, uh, and sending metta to all animals and, and beings and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And it comes out of, of its own. So, okay, you, you you send the email, you look at the phone, you do whatever it is. More and more, if you say, okay, I did it, I shouldn't have done it, that possibly is the best way that, that it slowly changes the habit. But you can't force it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But you have to be patient. But it will be faster than, than you would expect. From the start. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think just one quick tip that uh, for the similar sort of a problem is uh, my trick is normally it would be, you know, uh, just to fool the mind a little bit mm. uh, or just uh, like if. Normally, I used to check the phone whenever it said thing and thing like that. Then what I did is I just fixed the time. Like, okay, uh, two hours a day from 4 to 6 p.m. That's the time like, for checking my emails or checking my phone. So the, but then, so the next time when it say phone said thing, 
your mind actually knows this is not the time, that's another time. So just to give it a bit of a direction maybe helps in those scenarios. Mm -hmm. Or any form of a craving when we are starting with, mm -hmm. we just need to help our mind to trick a bit. For example, we are mm -hmm. free, uh, you're on a good healthy diet and we felt uh, eating like a chocolate. We know mm -hmm. there is a cheat day coming up. That's the time when uh, you know we can have these things, not now. Mm -hmm. I think when we are starting to avoid this thing, mm -hmm. instead of forcing, we can just give it a uh, like okay, this is a time to do it, not now. It mm. it just normally helps to settle more quicker. Mm -hmm. It's just a practical trick that works for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She 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 Sorry. changed her mind. No, no. no. <laughs> no she didn't change her mind. <laughs> no, I was just adding to uh, I guess what I was going to say about meta. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can be okay. Uh, you just said listen to you. Oh, oh, was it Benjamin? Sorry. Uh, yeah, Benjamin. Them, they yeah. talked about meta and you know when you're uh, this idea of being contracted around something. Um, I think sometimes validating it instead of uh, how to kind of um. You know, Tish Nathan encouraged people to do almost gratitude practice throughout the day where you kind of see the good in whatever your 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 mind state is. Like if you're stressed about the emails, kind of taking a moment to say, um, I am I am responsible, I am hardworking, mm. I am you know, so careful about the work I do and just um, almost holding that too with kindness mm. um, instead of launching straight into I shouldn't be doing this, mm. just uh, kind of almost breaking the cycle a little bit with some softness. You know? mm. uh, that, is, that is true. But yeah, yeah, you have to kind of stop and say some kind phrase mm. to that aspect of yeah. yourself sometimes, which... Yeah. You think you should change as well. Um, right. you know, just yeah. Soften that construction. Oh, that is yes. very nice. Thank you. Yeah, this was Tish um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. I think they learned that the, they, as monks, when they were training, they were told to repeat these kind of oh. things to themselves. Something mm -hmm. about, yeah, giving oneself gratitude in different ways and other people, what whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. That's a nice start. I hope everybody heard that. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Shirley. Shirley, may I unmute, please? Thank you, everyone, for all these wonderful suggestions. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put one more little thing into the pot that, and I, I think it was Gunter, I think you mentioned patience, Gunter. I mean, we are so strongly conditioned by our own habits and by our surroundings. We're so powerfully conditioned. We can't really help ourselves. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be, take responsibilities for our actions, and we can obviously grasp this the, the wrong way, but in one sense, we really can't help ourselves. We are just so strongly conditioned and we can take everything so personally and identify with it. And in one way, it's just stuff happening because of conditions. And I like Atun Pramali's simile of the great big tanker, mm. which can just be nudged. It takes such a lot of gentle nudging to turn itself around. But we want to turn ourselves around in one great big huge you know we sort of think by effort we go if we make enough effort we're going to we're going to um uh, we're going to be able to turn it around and go in the right direction and we just need to be um very gentle and kind and it's not personal we're just a massive we're just we're just we're just the results of conditioning. And, you know, as I say, this can be taken the wrong way. And sometimes maybe I sort of get all lazy and say, oh, well, you know, it's just, just conditioned. Mm -hmm. But at least it saves beating ourselves up and, and, and just um, 
adding a whole load of negativity to our to our to our you know less helpful habits so it's like this big tanker that I, I'm just so grateful to Ajahn Pramali for that simile because, you know, it's... Why don't you tell tanker. people the simile? May, not everybody might know the simile. Uh, he, uh, well, he, he, he talked about this. He talks about, I thought I'd explained it. A big tanker, a big... Um, Super tanker. Big ship, big, yeah. And I think he did explain it a lot. And I can't remember the explanation. But I think you can't just sort of turn it around like you're in a little boat where you just turn the wheel and it turns around. It just takes ages. And I think they have about four different steersmen and different machines to be able to turn it around. And it's very, 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 very slow and gradual. But it can be done. But it has to be done very mm. because because it's a, such a huge thing. And I think the simile that Ajahn Brahmali was saying was that we have this huge weight of conditioning to turn around. So we need to be very kind and gentle with ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that was the point he made. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, wow, we really, we really got into this subject. But Liz. <laughs> Liz, you are unmuted I think. Oh I am unmuted. Well me I will just add one little ingredient to the pot but it's an important one because I, I had a job, a very, very busy job and I used to work uh, 10, 12 hours a day, emails, phone calls and so on and so forth. And then I remembered the Buddha said look at things as they are. Look at your emails. Which one means that somebody's life depends on your answer? And when I started looking at my emails like that, I just laughed. I said, well, yeah, certainly not this one. This one, no way, and so on. And then you look, you appraise the workload as it really is. Yes, it needs to be done. But does it need, do I need to put myself in such a uh, state of stress? Um, and that, that actually turned me around. My tanker turned around quite quickly on this one. Once I could appraise each task I did. And at the beginning, it took longer, obviously, because I had to look at the email and say, okay, which one is very important? Which one have I got to do now? Or, or whatever. I was a teacher. And uh, so you, you have parents, you have kids, you have you know. and um, uh, But then I became a lot calmer and I went to bed a bit earlier. And I had about one meal a day, which I cooked. It really made a big difference to this appraisal of what is being asked, uh, rather than just go for it blindly, you know. Uh, uh, yes, so that, that's my ingredient in the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So we have come up to a whole, whole almost hour of talking about four lines. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a long book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hope that was useful everybody because it is something we all struggle with yeah yeah so um, including myself I didn't have a mobile phone for 14 years and the moment I got a mobile phone boy oh boy the moment it dings I have to check it because it could be the end of the world <laughs> I don't know what, they must have tuned that bing to be just the bing that hits your nerve. <laughs> uh, 
so yeah it's it's so easy to get addicted but so important to notice what we are doing and and at least not feed the tendency and realize this is this is not helping me yeah benjamin oh my favorite button is do not disturb thank you <laughs> that's a good one thanks <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so we will uh, I think um, wrap up there and um, I just uh, want to thank you everybody for contributing it was very very useful practical tips as well as profound tips thank you very much uh, oh, Shirley says, thank you for the quiet time to ground us. Thank you very much. I find that very useful too. So I think um, I wanted to say before we wrap up that um, Ajahn Brahmali is going to be here in June. For those of who, who you haven't heard of Ajahn Brahmali, but he's an excellent teacher. He lives in Perth, he's Ajahn Brahm's um, number two, you could say. And his uh, talk, he's going to be speaking in London, in Brighton, in Bristol, and in Oxford. If you would like to promote his talks, his, we have some posters on our website. If you go onto our website, go under special events, and we have posters available for anybody to download, print off, and circulate or just um, you know, send it to your friends on the email or whatever it is you want to do, because we have very few people coming. He's a brilliant, he's really a lovely person and a, a great teacher of the suttas especially. So uh, if you can help promote his, his uh, talk coming, talks coming up, please do. We would very much appreciate it. And it is for the benefit of the many and for the happiness of the many. So I think we will, uh, oh, yes, thank you. Oh, and something in Maj Metta <laughs> from Nikos. That's cute. <sighs> I'm not sure if uh, Gunther wanted to finish off with, um, uh, usual dinner talk, or yes, good days. Ready yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I think we all know by now that we have this nice Anukampa Grove now where we are sending all the Zoom sessions now. Um, and uh, there are many ways you can do dana, you can donate, um, you can also, uh, Contact teams at anukampaproject.org and um, for food dhanas, which are also needed. Um, and I think maintenance, various things, there is enough to do. You, it's almost unlimited for any help what we can uh, appreciate. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. basically all. Yes, thank you, Gunther. Thank you. That. Yes, so... Um, that's it. Um, tomorrow we have a meta session at uh, nine o'clock. You're welcome to join. And uh, I, I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs>